Well, hello again, everybody. Brian Wayne here, the regular host of the Cheers to Comics podcast. It's Wednesday, it's new comic book day, and I am not doing a pull list unbagging this week. Um, Once again, way too many books just didn't arrive on time, and mm, so I'm going to do something a little bit different now. Uh, I've been doing my top five reads lately, you know, if uh, you subscribe to the channel, you know that. If you don't, subscribe now, get notified when I come out and mm -hmm, do all my, uh, yeah, my my, my top five countdowns for best reads. But now I'm doing something uh, a little bit different, a new segment here. Uh, there, there's, there's money to be made in comics, people. There is. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I've, I've been known to be an investor of sorts. Some call it speculating, and yeah, no, it's, there's definitely speculating involved. Uh, but with that, I also do look at this as an investment. So I'm here to talk about my biggest investment books of the week. And there are a few, and I'm not going to count them down. I'm not going to leave anything out. If I think there's something that needs to be talked about, then I'm going to talk about it. So I got my, uh, my handy dandy list here. Um, I'm going to start out with uh, a book that did not arrive. Unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me, but I was able to secure a copy through... Uh, um, a, a, another shop, uh, so it's on its way. Canto. Canto and the City of Giants, number one. Now, uh, as far as first appearances and stuff like that go, I'm not sure that the, the, that's the thing to spec on. The, I think the, the, the big deal with this book is the announcement of the, the, the animated movie, the animated feature that they're doing um, through uh, Will and Jada Pinkett Smith's company. Um, so with that, I don't know if they're going to do a series of movies. I don't know if they're going to, you know, compile a lot of Kanto's journey into one big feature. I'm not sure what they're doing here, but these little stories play a lot of, you know, I think they have a lot of potential. I don't think they're extremely highly printed. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think there might be something to it. Next on the list is Jenny Zero Number One. Um, aside from it being uh, an intriguing indie story, there's actually, you know, it was recalled. There was a heavy-duty printing error. Um, my shop did not get it, was able to get a copy secured. It's on its way. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know for sure what the printing error is, what it looks like, but from my understanding, it's pretty significant. So there's, there's not going to be a whole lot of these out there. Um, depending on how well the book is received is going to determine the value of this book. But in the meantime, I say hold on to your copies and uh, just kind of just kind of wait a second. Um, I, I, it's you never know, man. You never know. So Jenny Zero, number one, also a story that I very much look forward to checking out. Uh, Daredevil, Daredevil number twenty nine. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that there are. Uh, some spoilers involved in this and I apologize if I ruin anything for you kind of sucks that it was ruined for me um, but uh, a lot of people have been speculating on this whole daredevil Electra type of situation you know most people oh, is it gonna play out is it gonna last I don't know well something happens in this issue uh, you know I, I I won't spoil it completely, but something happens in this issue that makes people kind of start to believe that going back and picking up more copies of issue 25 might not be a bad idea. Um, you know, and that's where Elektra becomes Daredevil. Elektra may actually kind of play out for a significant arc based off of what happened in this. Now, I know a lot of people are going, is it your first time reading comic books? They come back, duh. Uh, it might not happen in this arc because I've been going through and I see no solicits on the in the, the Marvel previews here for Daredevil going forward past 30. So, um, uh, what does that mean? I don't know. Are they hiding something? I don't know. I don't know what the plans are. I haven't heard Zarsky say I'm done with Daredevil. I don't know. But because of that, you know, I, I, th this this Daredevil 29 is a huge turning point. At least, at least temporarily. Do I really think that they're going to keep Matt Murdock dead? Absolutely not. Do I really think that they're going to keep uh, Elektra as Daredevil? That's a different story, because Matt Murdock can come back and rise like the Phoenix or some shit like that. Um, echoes the Phoenix now. Come on, people. Let's... Ah, look at that, look at that. I don't know. I don't know. But turning point issue. Turning point issue. Don't know if it's a huge book to, to make a bunch of money off of, but it's a good one to have in your collection, that's for sure. Oh, this, uh, Lock and Key, Sandman, what is it? Uh, the, the Hell and... Hell and Gone. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Netflix has acquired uh, Sandman, we know that. 
uh, Netflix has done lock and key already. There is a crossover happening in comics. Why wouldn't there be some sort of future crossover on Netflix? But with, with the two universes, you know, why why not? Joe Hill and Neil Gaiman working together in comics already. Why wouldn't they work together to c collab on a cinematic billion-dollar project? Uh, they will. They will. Uh, hasn't been announced yet, but uh, come on. If, if you're a speculator, then I think this is a no-brainer. You know, it's yeah. You, you you should pick up at least a couple copies of Sandman, Lock and Key, Darkhawk, Darkhawk, Heart of the Hawk. Now, nothing really huge happens in this book. Um, really, this is a, a, a book to pick up for the sake of pandering. You know, all hell Darkhawk, all of that good stuff. It sets up Darkhawk. I haven't had the chance to read it yet. Um, it tells Darkhawk's story uh, of the past, apparently. So, um, I don't know the details of these stories, but I haven't seen anybody blowing this shit up yet. And like, oh shit, something huge happens in Darkhawk. I think it would have popped off by now. Um... But with that being said, Darkhawk is all of the rage. Anything uh, new they're doing with Darkhawk, I think, is definitely worth snagging up. You know, it has that cult following, no doubt about it. So, yeah, I think there's something to it. You know, I don't know if there's anything big, but there's a potential to make a couple of dollars on here. It's not a huge investment, but I think it's a worthwhile one. Batman the Detective, number one, Tom Taylor. First appearance of Squire, and then a, a team appearance as well. Uh, I have gone through and read this. Uh, Squire, she's a dope character. You know, she, she's cool. Uh, unfortunately, this book is out of continuity. It's not canonical. Um, so what does that mean as far as new characters? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it's hard to say. But if, if, if you know, the, the sake of speculation for the most part when it comes to the big two, or, or for any reason for that matter, is the potential of them, these characters landing in a big screen event, right? So, uh, with, with DC the way they do things, nothing is really fucking canonical, it seems, with DC stuff. So why wouldn't they do non-canonical stories? It wouldn't surprise me one bit if they actually did um, a, a Legends of the Dark Knight movie. Or a Dark Detective, or what is this? Batman the Detective, that's what it is. I think they've had to change the name a couple of times, or at least once. Kind of threw me off a little bit. With that being said, though, I think Squire is a character of potential. Especially with the dude like Tom Taylor writing her. You know, he, he can make any character really, really strong and lovable. He, I mean, he created Gabby, which is my favorite, one of my favorite characters in all of comics, you know. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's time, man. It is, I, I really think that this Tom Taylor Batman miniseries is going to lead to something massive. So start out by picking up issue number one and maybe a couple of covers. Uh, and Superman this week, Superman number 30, we have a first appearance of, uh, uh, who is it, the Shadow Breed. Um, I know people are all down on DC spec, the, 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 the market with DC books and all of these new characters and everything, it's, it's being flooded, no doubt about it. This is kind of what DC is really doing to keep people's interest, stay afloat. I get it. You know, money. It's AT and T right now. You know, you, you got to keep that in mind. So you can't get mad at DC because it's really just Jim Lee being told by a bunch of, uh, you know, um, boardroom execs how to make money. And yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of a sad state in comics right now with DC. But with that being said, I know a lot of people are down, but everything is trendy. Everything is trendy. The mentalities are trendy in comics. When people are like, eh, new characters aren't really worth the shit in DC. That that that's that those times are going to change because eventually they're going to make a huge great DC movie that's going to set a forward-thinking universe or a, a straightforward universe. Uh, and, uh, whether you know Warner Brothers wants to admit it or not, that they're they're working at it. They're working at that. So when that happens, yes, these characters will be used. Am I saying they're quick flips? No. But I'm saying, you know, 10 years from now, maybe, fuck, 20 years from now, guaranteed 30 years from now, you're going to be really happy that you have these these DC characters. So I know I just kind of went on a rant there, but I'm trying to outweigh all of the negative trolls and shit that are all over the place going, eh, DC books aren't worth it. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. <sighs> so with that being said, yeah, uh, the, the Superman shadow breed, uh, long term, probably at best, <laughs> you know, but worth having. Worth having. How, how many times is there a character that you never thought would be shit pop up out of nowhere? Like, look at Echo. You know? Look at Echo right now. It's a $5 book forever. Now, boom. $150, $200. It's crazy. It's crazy. Batman. 
black and white the uh, the second print uh, of number three. Now the reason I'm all about this book is this cover appearance of Tiffany Fox. You know, this is the next Batman's new sidekick. Does she have a name yet? No. But as soon as she's she's set, and you know, the, in the next Batman universe, and that's more established, this book is going to blow up. I think the second print is going to be a lower printed book, and I believe this is her first cover appearance as well. So there's there's a lot, and for I'm not seeing it on anybody's radar, anybody talking about it for whatever reason. I, I don't know. So I think jump on it now because eventually it's going to blow up. Just because everybody's... There's a lot to talk about this week. Sometimes stuff just gets kind of mixed in. And I think this is one of them. It's not even on the Key Collector app. I find that crazy. It's not on the Key Collector app. I think this is a big, big book that people are really undervaluing on New Comic Book Day as it's released. But you will see. You will see. Uh, I, I've got two or at least... No, no. I've got three copies here. Uh, two here and one on the way. The big one that everyone's talking about, though, is uh, the, the, the Joker. Um, number two, first appearance of the Daughter of Bane, Vengeance. Fitting name, right? Mm-hmm. Vengeance of Bane. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, uh, I haven't had the chance to read it yet. Um, I see stores are already selling it for a couple dollars over cover price. Uh, it sounds like it's a really low printed book. There is a, um, a, a 1 in 50 uh, variant on it as well. That's the first appearance of... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't grab one of those. <laughs> it's going for a ridiculous... I'd like 300 bucks right now. But if you can get one for cheap, it's an easy flip. That's definitely... I think that's a quick flip. Uh, I think that book cools off real fucking fast. I do. Uh, it's, as soon as it starts circulating out there, I see it going for 150 to... I don't know, maybe even down to a hundred bucks within the next 30 days. So if you get that one, flip it fast. But the 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 number two here, I I the, the I think it's a hold. And the the B and the C cover is awesome, but the A cover is going to be the one that people want in the long run. And uh, yeah, there you go. I, I I think this is the probably the investment of the week. I would say is Joker number two. So there you go, people. There you go. It's been another new comic book day. Um, remember to check out the podcast, like, and subscribe to the channel. The podcast, by the way, it's all different content. I don't repeat any of this stuff. I don't transfer content over. Um, uh, the, the podcast, it's interviews and me talking about the FOCs ahead of time. You know, I, I, I tell you about these books ahead of time. I warn you about them. All the in, uh, I, I'm kind of in some circles, people. That's why I do this. So, uh... Yeah, if there's something hot out there, I'm going to I'm gonna start talking about it more. Uh, so these are my best investments of the week. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. And uh, I'll talk to you the next time I feel like talking about comic books. Cheers. Hi, uh, you're listening to Cheers to Comics podcast. This is Mark Russell, and you're listening to the Cheers to Comics podcast. Hey, everyone. I'm Monty Michael Moore, and this is the Cheers to Comics podcast with Brian Wayne. This is Drew Zucker. You're listening to the Cheers to Comics podcast.